The Beautiful Room is Empty by Edmund White is a semi-autobiographical novel published in 1988, following the coming-of-age journey of a young gay man. This book is the second installment in a trilogy, focusing on the protagonist's teenage and early adult years, encompassing the 1950s and 60s, leading up to the historical Stonewall riots in 1969. The unnamed narrator grapples with his sexuality while trying to establish himself as a writer. He finds himself entangled in a restrictive upper-middle-class preparatory school, which mirrors the broader societal norms that he feels alienated from. Yearning to break free, he befriends Maria, an outspoken bisexual, who introduces him to a counterculture world where nonconformity is celebrated. In this new environment, he encounters long-term homosexual couples, lesbians, and Tex, a bookshop owner who becomes his first intimate encounter with the gay community. Despite his attempt to suppress his desires, he engages in promiscuous sexual encounters. Upon entering college, the protagonist seeks a way to rid himself of his homosexuality and starts seeing an eccentric therapist who aims to cure him. Despite these efforts, he continues to explore his sexuality through numerous liaisons. Throughout the novel, the protagonist grapples with his identity, his desires, and societal expectations. Edmund White skillfully portrays a young man's struggles and self-discovery during a time when being gay was widely stigmatized. As he engages in empty and meaningless sexual encounters, the narrator becomes aware of the emptiness of such experiences. Despite this realization, he feels powerless to control his behavior and continues down this path. His friendship with Maria suffers as he struggles to accept his homosexuality. Seeking liberation from societal constraints, he gravitates towards people who have rejected societal norms. He admires their freedom and yearns to attain it himself. During a summer spent in his mother's apartment in Chicago, he meets Lou, an accomplished advertising executive residing in the same building. Their romantic relationship challenges the narrator's views on masculinity, writing, and his identity as a homosexual. Initially resistant to Lou's influence, the narrator eventually embraces his guidance and comes to accept himself, acknowledging both his growth and Lou's imperfections. However, when his mother discovers his behavior while she was away, she criticizes him for not fully committing to his therapy and recovery. The narrator realizes that he does not truly desire the change his mother seeks, as he has already accepted and embraced his authentic self during the summer with Lou. In this poignant moment of self-awareness, the narrator understands that he no longer desires to be someone he is not, and he embraces his true identity without any pretense. Lou's decision to pursue a heterosexual marriage deeply wounds the narrator, leading him to stop therapy sessions abruptly. He finds solace in a new relationship with a man named Sean, but Sean's unresolved issues surrounding his own sexuality ultimately cause them to break up. This experience makes the narrator contemplate the idea of trying a heterosexual marriage. However, he reconsiders after learning of Lou's failed attempt at such a marriage. One fateful night, the narrator and Lou find themselves at a gay bar that gets raided by the police. As the bar's patrons refuse to accept further oppression, they fight back, standing up for their rights. Witnessing this act of rebellion, the narrator and Lou are moved by the display of freedom and resistance, reinforcing their conviction to live authentically and embrace their true selves. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.